Thank you all for coming. My name is Jean. I'm one of the three members of the board of the society. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy. Miss Angelina Wilson will give you some hints and helpful suggestions on how to protect your children. Angelina Wilson. Thank you, Jean. Um, yeah, I'll pass this out. This is actually my card from the police did it a few years ago. Um, I've, I've written a little bit. Remember, if the worst should happen, after you call the police, obviously, you call this number. That I can give a great help. That is NICMIC, the National Center for the Exploited Children. They were formed as a as private nonprofit by John and Merve Walsh after their son Adam was kidnapped in 1981. Um, unfortunately, that did not have a happy ending. Um, but it, it did for a lot of other kids because when they started that, a few years later, President Reagan signed a new bill into law and created the National Center for Missing Exploited Children, and it became a government agency. Today, they find um, in 2022, and the numbers here, um, they found out of, let's see, okay, out of, 27,644 children reported. They found 24,229. So it's pretty amazing what they're able to do. Approximately 2,300 children a year are reported missing. Either they ran away, they may have been lost, a family abduction, um, a stranger, which is the most rare. Um, Stranger abduction is the most rare. Yes, it is the most rare. Yeah, that's surprising. Yeah. The most common is kids abducted by someone they know, whether it's a non custodial parent or it's some other family member, a grandparent, whatever it may be. That's the most common type of abduction. Um, unfortunately, if you are over the age of 12, back in the day, not so much today, but back in the day, if you were over the age of 10, they called you a runaway regardless. And you had to wait like 24 hours to report a missing. Um, and I remember when, when you left, when you were 12 years old, we reported you. We even went to the news station. They didn't care because you were a runaway. You were 12. <laughs> Don't throw me under the bus. It's not my fault. No. They shouldn't care. That's my point. They didn't that day. Um, but yes, 78% are non custodial parents. 35% of children were between the ages of 6 and 11. 24% lasted between one week and one month. 82% intended to affect custody permanently. 21% are other relatives, 42% of children were living with a single parent, 15% were living with another relative or foster parent, and 66% were living by a male relative. Um, in non-family abductions, 81% were 12 years or older, which look at me. Um, in non-family cases, 58% were 12 years or older in stereotypical kidnapping. In 40%, the child was killed, and in another 4%, the child was not recovered at all. So, now to, to go to tips. Um, well, before we do that, these are the oldest cases here in Massachusetts that I could find. Part of this was about history. Um, Joseph Munier disappeared from Salem, Mass. in 1924. The only picture you find of him today looks like he's in a Halloween costume dressed up as a Native American. It's, it's all that could be found. Susan Ronald Lab disappeared in 1974. I did not think of it somewhere. And the closest one to us, and the earliest one I could find like, in this area, is the case of Adam Romano, 
Andrew would be the same age as me if you were alive. He was four years old when he vanished from Webster in 1978. Um, 495 hadn't been put through there yet. It was another smaller group. Uh, some of you yeah. ladies who are a little bit older might remember that before 495 came through. It's 140. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he um, left his trailer park and was playing in the woods and he dropped his toy and he was all upset. He fell down. So his sister ran home to get their money because he fell down. And when they came back, he was gone. There were a couple of suspects. Uh, David Brown, also known as Nathaniel Bardona, who Lucky Montana, <laughs> not so lucky Montana, <laughs> we let him go and he ended up there because we paroled him to there without telling them that he was a serial child abuser. You know, that's a fact murders, all kinds of things. So they weren't very happy with us. <laughs> that got made national media. Um, so he was one of the suspects in that case. There was also someone who confessed uh, when he was passing away to that case. Uh, unfortunately, the area that they have to search for him is under power lines from here clear through Rhode Island, a long stretch of like grass down the highway. It's insane. So finding him is how I'm going to do I'm going to talk about the words, and then I'm going to Give me some tips. Okay. Now we all know the Amber Alert. That's standard. Um, some states call it something different. In Alabama, they call it the Morgan Nick Alert. In Georgia, they call it Levi's Call. Levi's case is still unsolved, although his birth is not. Um, in Hawaii, it's called the Malia Amber Alert. And oh no, that's not, a, not Alabama. I'm sorry, not another A. Arkansas is the Morgan Report. I'm sorry. Um, and of course, everyone knows the Amber Alert was named for Morgan. Uh, Amber Pagnet. So, uh, and also in stores, okay, they have a called for Adam. That is named for Adam Walsh. I think Walmart started that because he was taken from a Sears store. And um, what happens is, if, if the parent goes upset and says, look, my kid is missing, I can't find my kid, they want to have somewhere in the store, or someone in the parent or whatever, they initiate a code That means the doors are locked. You're locked in until they find the kid. To hopefully prevent, if they were adopted, to kidnap her from walking out of the store with them. So it's a safety measure the store has taken. It's called code after Adam. Um, now, tips. Can I ask you a question? Sure. That code Adam, is mm -hmm. that law or is that just something they call the No, it's something the stores initiated. I, I don't know that it's law anywhere. It may be in some places, but it's something that stores initiated. Was he riding his bike, Adam Walsh? No, he was in a Sears store and they had put up a display of a new video game. And he was watching some older kids play. His mother went around the corner to buy a lamp. And when she came back, he was gone. The security guard had taken all of the kids and put them outside, including little six year old Adam. Mm -hmm. And they believe he was taken from standing up that store. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so, and Adam and I would be the same age. Um, and if, if, you guys, that? <laughs> um, if you've ever watched um, America's Most Wanted, that's his dad. Um, okay, the tips. Now, we say use the buddy system. Um, we're going to use this. But that doesn't always work because there have been cases of kids being adopted in groups of pairs. It's rare, but it does happen. I have it on my channel. Um, but you're always safer using the buddy system. And have a password. Because many times somebody, even somebody your kids know a little bit through you, will go up and say, hey, mommy, you know, I'm a mommy's or daddy somewhere or mommy somewhere. They ask me to take you to them. You ask for that password. If they don't have their password, you don't get it in that car. Because that would mean mommy or daddy didn't send them. And don't be a 
great. My, my mother always said, you know, we teach kids to just respect adults, but if somebody is trying to grab you or touch you in an inappropriate way, don't be afraid to kick, bite, scream, scratch, whatever you have to do. There is no respect. So, um, and if you go to a big place, like the big E, for example, like we have here, um, I got this idea. I was watching an Australian show about the missing. And they have a big, like a festival. And they're required, because the police are there, they're required to write their name and their phone number on their child's arm because so many children wander away. And a place like the Big E, I, I recommend that. I think that's a great idea for a big amusement park. They're out at Six Flags or something. Because they need away so fast. They really can't. But if your kid is looking for you, a lot of times when they're little, they don't know mommy's name, they don't know daddy's name. What's the first mommy did, mommy? They need to know that. My mother already made sure I knew her name was Ella, my father's name was Walker, even though everybody called him little. And I knew my phone number. You know, because how many times have you heard, what does mommy look like? Mommy, that's not helpful. You know? So, and you know if any stars are worth marks, you'll see that on here, because the past so expensive, um, that your kid has. Uh, let's see. With your new fingerprints, um, you can take a little bit of hair and put it in a baggie um, for DNA if you want to, or take a swab and put it in a baggie for, to have for DNA. A lot of people do that now. Um, I always have a recent picture, but like Diana and I discussed, moms and dads have cell phones now. Their kid is probably their screen when they hit the button. So they probably already have those um, on their phone. And just make sure your kids learn their phone number, you know, and learn the address. So, um, coming about quarter past four to uh, talk to the kids a little bit more. Someone who is not a relative abducts and detains a child without lawful authority. And there were also 115 what they call stereotypical kidnappings. A stereotypical kidnapping is when a stranger or slight acquaintance transports a child 50 miles or more from home and either. <laughs> I don't want to say really kills the child, holds the child for ransom, or intends to keep the child permanently. Um, What's interesting though is sometimes those kids are found many years later. Look at JC Duga. Look at, um, oh crap, I can't think of his name now, and I'm picturing him. He was, he was gone for five years, and then when, and also don't forget, um, Stephen Stainer, he became a hero. He rescued that little boy so that little boy wouldn't live through what he had lived through. It's the same with Doctor. I'm going to pass this around. This is my picture and my fingerprints, my information when the police did mine when I was 10 years old. <laughs> did you remember me at that age? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, 
I hope you're not embarrassed for me. <laughs> no, you look great. No, no, that I, that I mentioned you, but it always upset me. Oh. And that's one of the reasons I got into this, because that always upset me, that they did that. Because it upset my mother, that they did that. What did they do? So, my mother, they called Channel 5 and Channel 7 and all those channels when, when, when you were missing, when you were 12, when you were drunk, and they wouldn't take it seriously because it was the 80s and you were 12. 70s and 80s, they didn't care. You know? Yeah, it was probably the tenth time I did it too, though, man. <laughs> <laughs> they were yeah. probably like, looked at that and said, no, we're not going to be sending any. How old does the police officer and stuff like that body and stuff like that?
Yeah, I've seen I've seen some documentaries and movies and reps and stuff. I don't I don't really see those those helps at all. And Lindbergh was in up and he was a lot of balls. Uh, <laughs> right. I said I think Lindbergh himself was in up to his pretty little eyeballs. Oh, you think he was involved? Oh, yeah. That's my opinion. Okay. <laughs> so, based on, like I said, reading, watching documentaries and stuff, there are things that just didn't add up. And then, of course, the yeah, yeah. Apollo and Lotto, that was, those two were nuts. They chose one of their cousins and thought that they were so smart that they could get away with it. Yeah. Yes? So what happened to Ava Boyle was her, her dad was um, suffering from depression. Mm -hmm. ah, that's good. And a little psychosis on the side. Yeah. This is the actual side. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the police because that's going to be another 10 minutes. Is there a restroom here? Yes, there's a right behind you. So the light is on the outside to the right. Okay. You want to do an intermission? Sure. 10 minute intermission. Uh, and remember, if somebody asks you for directions, do not get the one to the car. I learned that very young, because I was 16 and had by the next And uh, if you have by the next you still have to go walking down the street, so I'm just trying to ask you for directions. Don't get them in our direction. Like, walk home. Um, and it doesn't matter if you're doing it. Just keep going. <laughs> and if you have a car, Thank you. Uh